Hi, everyone. Welcome back to the Change Your Mind podcast, where we explore personal development, spirituality, and science. I'm your host, Chris Ashley, and this is episode one of season two. I'm really excited. You probably didn't even notice I was on a break because I have an amazing virtual assistant, Christine, who has been faithfully putting podcasts out for me every week and posting on social media. But uh in in the real world over here, I just am coming off of maternity leave. I had my son 11 weeks ago yesterday. He's amazing. And I am so excited to be back. And this the guest today is like the perfect guest to kick off season two. I'm really excited. I can't wait to hear what she shares. I can't wait for you to hear what she shares. A couple quick announcements first. Head to the links in the show notes. You'll find a link to my book, Change Your Mind to Change Your Reality. It was endorsed by three experts from the film The Secret, Bob Doyle, Michael uh, Beckwith, Marcy Shimoff. It was endorsed by John Gray, who wrote Men Are From Mars, Women Are From Venus, Anita Morjani, lots of others. You'll also find links to my free live workshop, all about uh, releasing debilitating emotional stress that's holding you back. And what else? Uh, there's courses. And of course, you'll find all the links to my amazing guests uh, stuff as well. And as always, this podcast is part of the Los Angeles Tribune Podcast Network. Check out what they're doing. Lots of cool stuff in the personal development realm. Hi, I'm Chris. When I was younger, I went through trauma that caused me to feel broken and lost. But my life changed after I had a spiritual awakening. Since then, I've dedicated my life to studying and learning from masters all around the world that have helped me to create a life of fulfillment and abundance beyond my wildest dreams. Now I'm dedicated to sharing everything I've learned so that you don't have to suffer for decades like I did. I've seen people's lives completely transform, and I share it all right here. All right, let's get to it. With me today, I have Teresa Warnstaff. So Teresa is an influ influential catalyst for graceful change. She was born a high-level intuitive and has cultivated her intuitive skills of knowing and channeling so she can tap into your soul and guide you to manifest a life of perfect purpose, design, and desire. She is also the host of the amazing podcast, Soul Channel. Go check it out. She offers several online workshops. She leads transformational masterminds. She works with Sounds True in the Inner MBA. She offers workshops to grow your intuition. She hosts a weekly trust circle. So much amazing opportunity there to work with Teresa, especially some of those for free. So welcome, Teresa. I'm so happy you're here. Oh, Chris, I'm so excited for our conversation today. This is going to be fun. So buckle up, buttercup. This is going to be a journey. <laughs> yeah. And also sneak peek behind the scenes. I was just on Teresa's podcast. Literally, we just recorded the episode. So we're already vibing like high vibe style. So everyone else rise up, meet us. Uh, we're going to get into it. So Teresa, I always ask my guests to start off the same way, and that is by telling me their origin story. So what led you on this path of mediumship and healing and coaching? What was that catalyst for you? Oh, that's such a great question. Because I was born completely turned on. I had all of my gifts. I saw, heard, I knew, I felt, and Growing up as a child, having all of your gifts empowered was confusing. Mm. So let me give you a couple of examples. <clears throat> My dad would make an announcement, something that the family was going to do. And immediately I'd be flooded with dread or sadness or I just knew it was not the right decision for the family as a unit. And yet, when you're six years old, you can't say, um, excuse me, sir, I don't think you should do that because you have no context. You, you, I could barely understand what was going through me. And so as I grew up, I had this love-hate relationship. Well, it wasn't even love-hate. It was go, no go with my intuition. I would lean on it when I got scared or sad or I needed support, I would push it away when I was feeling confident and strong. I can do this. I can do this all by myself. 
And the bottom line is it never went away. It continued to stay with me my whole life. And in true blinding faith, I decided I could do it on my own. I didn't need to use my intuition to live my life. So I did all the things. I lived my life by default. I went and got a job. I rose the corporate ladder. I was successful. I was doing the things. I'd get into a job and get promoted within six months or a year because I was doing all these amazing things. And in hindsight, I now know all those amazing things were happening because I was leaning into my intuition and following my guidance. So for me, my origin story is one of back and forth with my intuition. Today, every single part of my life is led by my intuition, my relationship with my guides, and I absolutely believe, I know as fact, that everything is within reach. Everything I can dream, everything I can desire can manifest or something better because you have to leave that door open, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it's been a tumultuous journey. It's been a tumultuous ride. I was also, uh, here are some of the not so fun highlights. I was molested five times before I was 15. So coming to terms with that event, those events, I was a single mom. I had no child support. I had to raise my kids on my own. So I was reminded by a friend who did my numerology that I'm in a zero uh, cha challenges life. And zero is you get to live all of the challenges. So that I have done. and. I wouldn't change one single thing because it informs who I am. My capacity for compassion, understanding, non judgment, and love is equal to all of those hardships that I've had to overcome. So, though it was hard and confusing and challenging, I, I, I wouldn't change a single event. Yeah. Thank you so much for sharing all of that, the, the good and the bad and all the things. And, and that's all subjective anyway, right. To say good and bad, but I, I can feel your, your strong love and empathy and compassion just coming through the screen right now. I was, you know, you kept giving me goosebumps when I was on your show a little bit ago and I just got goosebumps again when you were talking and I love what you said about how you wholeheartedly just believe that everything is within reach. You know that you're going to manifest it. There's no doubt in your mind. You're following your intuition. And I, I love that because I resonate with that so much. You know, I, I know that anything I want is on its way to me, right? Yeah. But I think for a lot of listeners, mm -hmm. that's a really hard thing to grasp. So how how do you how did you get to that point of just trusting your intuition, or what does that look like for you to go through a day just trusting your intuition? Uh, you know, give give some people some guidance if they're struggling with that themselves. <laughs> yes, that is an excellent opportunity because I took you all the way to the end, but the journey between where I started and where I am today is really the essence of what I want to share. Mm -hmm. Everything in our life happens for us. And, and we discussed this earlier today. But when we hold the perspective that everything that comes into our life is to inform us of something that wants to evolve within us, then we're in a position of authority, autonomy, and sovereignty over our life. <clears throat> if we stand in 
I'm going to give you a ton of information all at once so we can dissect. I'll, I'll let you guide me. If we can stand with patience, curiosity, and neutrality and observe the events in our lives, understand the opportunities they've brought to us, then we evolve. Then we move into a place of greater and greater levels of trust. And the underpinning fuel for all of that is our intuition. When we allow ourselves to use what I believe is our most powerful asset, then it's easier to transcend the challenges, the opportunities, the unknowns, the questions. And and I want to break it down into some basics because I don't think we do that enough. Our intuition mirrors every one of our physical senses, right? So we've got touch, which is empathy. Mm. We have knowing, which is um, which is the mind. We have hearing. We have taste. We have smell. We have sight. All of our physical attributes, our senses, are mirrored in our intuition. And when you walk into a room or when you encounter information or when you meet somebody new, 100% of the time, your intuition is giving you impressions first. And then it's dropped into the physical reality. So for me, encouraging individuals to foster their relationship with their intuition is key. Your mind is brilliant, but it only knows what it knows. It only knows what it doesn't know, but it doesn't know what it doesn't know. The universe, your soul, your guides, your intuition can fill in that vast blankness of, I don't know what I don't know. So for example, if you are wanting to manifest an opportunity or a new job or a partner, you put that information out to the universe, this is what I want, then the universe brings you opportunities to cultivate that. And you will find that you'll be afforded more and more opportunities, more variety of opportunities, the less prescriptive you get, the more open you are to using your intuition to manifest. Does that resonate? Does that make sense? It resonates a lot. And I've never heard anyone talk about how intuition mirrors our physical senses. And I really, really like that piece. And I mean, there's a lot that you talked about that I really like, especially the part about you start to trust more and more. And I think that's a really big part of it, right? To trust your intuition, because that's where you kind of build up the confidence. And then maybe something small that you've manifested happens and you start to be like, okay, maybe, maybe I'm going to trust a little bit more in this and I'm going to go for something a little bigger. And then that starts to happen, right? And then you start to get this confidence with it. Uh, you know, I'm going to ask you, where do you think intuition comes from? Is that your higher self? Is that a part of you on the other side? Is it your guides? What What is that intuition? Yeah, that's a great question. I think it comes from multiple places. Um, certainly your soul, because your soul mm, wrote out and gave a general guideline to what you were here in this life to do. You know, your soul said, okay, we're going to learn these lessons and we're going to do these things and we're going to have these kids and we're going to meet these people. <clears throat> so I, I, I know, I don't believe, I know that your soul is a great source of information, but you also have a team of guides that work with you. So let's talk a little bit about guides because yeah. that is also very nuanced. You have lifetime guides. 
These are, and you can call them angels or guides, and you can give them names, and you can talk to them. Lifetime guides are spirits, energies that stay with you through your whole life. They're there no matter what. They're often there to help you move through your karma. They know the whole blueprint of your life and what you're there to do. Of course, there's always free will, so you're going to choose and change things up a little bit. But they know everything, and they help to keep you on track. So they're the guides who say, yes, yes, go in that direction. That's the way you're supposed to go. Keep going. Or the ones that offer that little bit of a trip. No, no, no. Don't go there. No, 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 no. Turn left. Turn right. Um, And then you have episodic guides. Guides who come in with specific wisdom that wants to be shared in that event of your life. Hmm. So, for example, if you, like, I'll, I'll use, you went to yoga school. You went and learned to become a yoga teacher. Mm -hmm. During your time working in the somatic realms, developing somatic wisdom, you would have had a guide come in who would support with wisdom specifically in that area. And it could be one or it could be several. Um, You also have health guides, guides that are there specifically to make sure that you keep on track with your health. And they can be called on to... um, provide support when you're going through a physical challenge and there was a gosh you you you're well read um there's a program called the map you you said the map the map and it was a specific pyramid that you put yourself into and dropped in your guides and they helped work on your physical being it's a book back in the 90s. Oh, excuse me. I'm not familiar me. with that one. I'll have to look into it. Yeah. I'll have to see if I can find it again. So you have in, uh, topical guides. You have event-driven guides. You have guides that are there for a period of your life, such as parenthood. Um, and then you have universal wisdom, Right. So you have, yes, every single one of you listening, you have access to universal wisdom. You can tap into whatever information that you want. Excuse me. Now, is it optimal for you to have that information in the moment? If it's not, it's not going to come in. So that's when we move back into trust and say, okay, so what what should I know? And then you start playing, dancing with the universe and learning what is for you to know. So it's a big subject and it's, you know, it's kind of like intuition. They teach us all about our physical body in school, but they don't teach us anything about intuition and only now is it beginning to be normalized yeah we were talking we were just talking earlier about how there's this awakening this rising of consciousness it's a really exciting time to be alive so thank you for sharing all of that i i never heard about guides that come in for just certain seasons of your life and that's really interesting and it makes sense and you know i'm i'm curious who who are these guides are they people who knew you in a past life are they more evolved beings mm-hmm. are they you know like who are they why are they volunteering in this role what do they get from it so they get to learn okay they get to learn through you mm-hmm. and they get to um help guide you to your optimal path because we're humans we take left turns all the time and also, when your soul plans out this life, you have a whole team 
that helped you organize the information. And that team doesn't go away just because you incarnate into your human body. <clears throat> they stay with you. They continue to support you. Those are the guides. And never doubt this. They love you. Mm. Like capital L love you. They want so much for you more than you can imagine which is why when you manifest you always ask for something and say this or something better because the universe will give you more than you ask for if you open to receive it it's a two-way street right and because the earth plane is free will the human existence is free will Cultivating the environment to receive everything that is waiting for you is the human evolution journey. And my um, my guides are knocking on the door. They've been sharing information this whole time, but they would like to speak. Shall we do a little channeling? Can I ask a couple more questions first? Uh-huh, you just to just to prep us a little bit um but yes i absolutely want your guides to come in i'm i'm very excited i was very excited when you told me that you can channel on the show so yes they will definitely come in <laughs> um but i just i appreciate that explanation and you know i talk a lot about soul contracts too i'm i'm sure you're familiar with dolores cannon's work i'm a huge mm-hmm. fan of her work as well and that's where i learned a lot about soul contracts and all of that And especially that team, right? Between lifetimes, they help you review if you learn those lessons or not. And the last one, they help set you up for the next one. And I like to always, I'm curious what your thoughts are about this, but I like to also say that part of that team incarnates with you and part of them become your adversaries, right? The villains, the enemies in air quotes of this lifetime, because they love you so much, right? With that capital L that they're willing to allow you to be angry at them. They're willing to play this part so that you can grow. And that's like learning that was one of the biggest shifts for me when it came to learning how to forgive people. Because it's like you said, everything is happening for you, not to you. And these people are here acting out, they're actors. They're acting out this predetermined script that you helped create with them, these challenges, these adversities that we're going through, right? With the sole purpose of allowing you to grow from it. And then once you're both back on the other side of the veil, everyone takes off their costumes (laughs) and the curtain closes and they'll probably give you a big hug or whatever form they're in and tell you how proud of you they are, right? Because it's all happening for you. And I'm, I'm curious what your thoughts on that are, because that's, that has just, we were talking about forgiveness on your show, but that has just helped me so much in forgiving these people who have maybe been a little cruel to me in this lifetime. Yes, I agree with that 100%. Everyone who comes into our life is a mirror for what we want to learn, whether it's by action, by word, by however they're meant to deliver that information to us by deed they will do so and give us the opportunity to evolve and grow in that specific area. Yeah. It's pretty amazing. This experience that we're having, right. That we call life. It's, it's, you know, and and especially we're talking about again, like Mm -hmm. when you take a step back and you can just hold it all so lightly, you know, it doesn't have to be this heavy burdensome thing where you're this victim and all these horrible things are happening and it's a struggle like you really can make it a game and that's why the law of attraction and manifesting is so fun you get to it, it's like you're assembling a video game like the sims or something right you're assembling your yeah. dream job and the relationship of your dreams and all of these amazing things and then you get to learn along the way so i i like that you said cultivate an environment to receive. So how does someone do that? How do they put themselves in the right state to receive? Yeah, that's a good question. Patience, neutrality, and curiosity. Mm. 
so you said something really that I really love, how to assemble what you want to manifest. That is incredibly accurate. I'm kind of a word nerd. I'm like you. I read everything I get my hands on and I'm a word nerd. I love words because I feel them energetically before I know their meaning. So for me, when I hear assembly, it's this great alchemical co-creation, right? So if you're assembling in manifestation, your job, and I have a class on my website that takes you through this specifically, but here it is for free. Um, (laughs) You open, you open your energy, you set your intention, you allow communication in an infinity loop between you and the universe, open, allow, and receive. So you will receive something in alignment with your manifestation. And that's your part. That is up to you. That You have to be open. You have to allow and you have to receive. This is um, activating the key to our free will. This is turning the knob, opening the door and saying yes. And then you observe what you've received you align. And let me paraphrase that because the alignment is the negotiation. Oh, you sent me a red rowboat. I really wanted an orange one. So I'm going to send that back. I'm I'm not going to take that, but I am going to send it with the hopes and dreams of getting an orange one. So you, you open, allow, receive, you observe, you align, so using the information you receive with the from the universe and your wishes and then you send that off to the universe so you reflect that into your world and it's o a r o a r open allow receive observe align reflect and this was channeled back in 2020 or 2021 The universe says, this is the infinity loop of manifestation. This is how you do it. Manifestation is not, I want an orange boat, and you turn around and it's sitting in your backyard, right? It's not a genie in a a bottle, right? (laughs) Right, yeah. It's a step-by-step process. And often we become impatient or we become disheartened or we don't believe we deserve it. And we use the evidence of it not showing up exactly like we asked for as evidence why we shouldn't receive it. And that's not it. Be patient. Be neutral about what you are receiving and be curious. How can I receive this and make it even better? And then all of your guides, your angels, whatever you want to call them, go, woohoo, it's on. Let's go. We're playing now. She's on the other side of the tennis court. She just lobbed it back. What are we going to do? Then they start to bring the people, places, and things together to bring you that orange rowboat or to bring you that yacht. I mean, you don't know. But if you stay so locked in to what it has to look like, that control, you lose the opportunity, A, for this dance, this playful, fun dance, and B, to receive something even greater that the universe has waiting for you. Yeah, I I, I really, I love that so much. Thanks for giving away your info for free. I appreciate it. Uh, <laughs> listeners, you're welcome. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I like I like that idea of staying open and receiving more. And I think it's important what you said. Some people use that it's not there yet as evidence. And that's where it's almost like we were talking earlier about how you build that trust. It's like they almost start to build the distrust, right? And then for me, the other step that I've really noticed works is taking action, right? And you kind of said it, you said it without saying it, right? Because you're like, maybe you send back that orange robot or maybe you take it, right? Like, you have to, it doesn't just fall into your lap. Like you have to create some sort of movement towards it. Right. That's been my experience anyway. Yeah. A hundred percent. The universe will give you something you need to take action. Absolutely. And, and again, it goes back to, um, 
countermanding the control, you take one step, then the universe responds. You take one step, the universe responds. And that, and that's how you start. You know, it's, it's like building a business. So I have 30 years in corporate. I have, I, and I actually I love business. I really love leadership because I love evolving and growing my teams. That was my favorite part of, of work. But it's evolutionary. I mean, you don't introduce a new concept to a business or to a team and then it manifests. It takes time to grow. Mm. Same with everything that you're doing. Give yourself time to manifest and evolve, and evolve to the place where you can receive exactly what you're looking for. Yeah. Yeah. And that's such an important message for anyone listening that maybe doesn't have that rowboat in their backyard yet, right? Yeah. So I want to go back to guides really quick before you channel. How do our guides communicate with us? And I know that there are people who, and, and you know, we say these gifts, I think all humans are capable of them. Just not, it's not turned on in most people, right? Like it, like it is in you. So some people can channel, there's mediumship, but the average person, everyone has a guide. Everyone has a team of guides, like you were saying. How do their guides communicate with them in ways that maybe they're missing? Is it through song lyrics? Is it through, you know, like whatever? Like, I, I'm just curious. Yep. Every way that you can <clears throat> possibly think of. Our guides send us hundreds of messages a day hmm. trying to figure out how we'll listen. So it could be by drawing our attention to a billboard, it could be by a thought that just drops in randomly. It could be by somebody phoning us and saying, hey, this just happened. Listen, what happened to them and how does it apply to you? It could be through a conversation you overhear in the grocery store as you're walking around getting your lettuce. It could be a song. It could be a text. It could be something you run into on Google. Every single way that we communicate, our guides use to communicate with us. Do you think they'd ever just get frustrated if we're not paying attention? <laughs> I think they think we're funny and they get amused that we keep missing all these signals. Here's here's a good good um oh and before I go to the example, every single human on this planet is intuitive with all of the senses. It's which ones are you going to cultivate? Which ones are your primaries? Which are the strongest? And which ones will you choose to use the most? For some people, it's closing their eyes and seeing the film across their inner mind. They'll use sight. Some people use sight in the physical world and they can actually see orbs or shadows or beings in their world. Some people it's hearing. I have a great story about hearing. I was sitting at, I, I had bought this beautiful um, tree that was going to fit exactly in the one place I needed to fill in my yard. And it was a tiger's eye sumac and I just fell in love with it. It was beautiful. It was glorious. <laughs> and I'm sitting at a coffee stand outside of the market, taking a break. And I heard, go get your tree. And I'm looking around everywhere, like, what, what? And I'm like, oh, nobody said a word, but it was like somebody spoke to me. Wow. And I walked over, that vendor was packing up his truck to leave. If I had waited five minutes, I would have lost my tree. That's so funny. Your guides wanted you to have your tree. <laughs> They did. <laughs> I love that. That's really cool. Yep. Yep. So it, it's interesting. My, my, uh, sorry, I mean to cut you off. My dog, who I was really, really close with, she was like my child, passed away in May of 2022. And every single day since the day she died, I have seen 555 on the clock every single day. Mm. And I know in the angel numbers, that means like a change is coming or something. But I'm like, I swear it's her. Like, yeah. I think it's her. Yeah. It's so interesting. Your connection with animals is so profound. Mm. 
I am um, my cat who passed in 21, 22, 21. It doesn't matter. Um, came in three times last week because he wants to start working with me. Aww. I know. I have. I am. I love animals. I have cats, and now I have a dog thanks to the universe. Um, but, what kind of dog uh, do you have? He is. He's a mutt. He's a poodle terrier mix, and. I was driving to Trader Joe's for groceries and the universe tapped me on the shoulder and said, look over there. There was a homeless person with a dog. And I said, oh, would you like me to get them lunch or dog food or <clears throat> no, no. We just want to draw your attention to that person and the dog. The next day I'm driving to Costco and tap, tap, tap. Look over there, says the universe. And there's a homeless person with a dog. And I said, am I supposed to get them in? No, you don't need to take action. And I said, uh-uh, no, 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 this is not in the car. I'm not getting another dog. <laughs> Three days later, I'm at the grocery store with my daughter. We walk up to the front of the grocery store, and there's a guy with a wagon full of puppies. My daughter, <clears throat> who is just the most amazing being on the planet, Looks at me and says, I'll get the groceries. You get the dog. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. I know. So now I have a dog. <laughs> That's really happy. Uh, I love dogs. I mean, I'm also such a huge animal lover, but. Yeah. Uh, dogs are the best. They're just unconditional love personified, right? In a physical body. It's amazing. Yeah, they are. So one other question I had about messages before we bring your channel in or before we bring your guides in, is it your experience that when we don't listen to our messages, they start to get louder? Because I know there's been times where I, I haven't been paying attention and the universe takes me by the shoulders and like shakes me. And it like, it's like, that's where those those really big turning points in life happen, right? When everything comes crumbling down, but then like in looking back, you're like, oh, there were so many signs that I just ignored. Yes, 100%. Those are what I call two by four moments when we, oh, yeah. <laughs> we've avoided the message for so long, whether by intent or by default. And all of a sudden the universe is like, okay. And, and, and here's the thing. They these two by four moments come when um when we're moving in a direction that doesn't support our optimal evolution, or mm. it could be dangerous. You know, I've I've had um <clears throat> a two by four moment well where I've actually been in a car accident and yet it stopped me from what ended up being a huge like eight car pileup, just yeah. a little ways down the road mine was a minor fender bender nobody was hurt the cars were barely damaged maybe a couple hundred dollars worth of paint repairs but i was not there yeah so it's always for us you know even though it looks challenging it's it's always for us i always think about things like that like if i'm stuck in traffic or something i'm like well maybe if the roads were open today i would have gotten in a terrible car accident mm -hmm. you know yeah. Okay. I know we put it off. I know your guides want to come in. I'm excited for them to come in. Thank you for answering a few questions first. Um, you. Yeah. I mean, do you need to give an introduction? How, I'll, I'll pass it on to you to, all right. <clears throat> no, what I do is I just, so my, okay. They're, um, they're coming in hot. <laughs> <laughs> before I jump in, before I let them jump in and they're ready. Um, I will share that I'm always connected with my guides, that they are a primary source of information for me. And here they come. They wish to share this information with you because it is with great joy and delight that they can bring in the energy codes and transmissions that come through with the speaking that Teresa does. And what we most want you to know is A, who we are. We are the 99. We are Teresa's primary guide. We are a collective of souls from all places across the galaxy, this universe, and actually others. She is rather unique in that way. 
And we are here specifically as a collective to help Teresa to support the human evolution on the planet Earth, because now is a time of great change and there's much wisdom that wants to be anchored. This wisdom cannot come in without a human host, very similar to what Chris has shared in her book. That is information that she channeled because she knew it was essential for humans to be able to receive this information and shift and change their life for the optimal, because the first responsibility of the human existence is self-evolution. Who are you? Are you the person you wish you could be? Are you that person that wants to be fully expressed in whatever fashion? It does not mean fully expressed, does not mean being outrageous or loud or ob ob uh, words. It is all about authentic self-expression. It is the quiet, small gestures we make to the wildlife. It is how we tend the earth. It is how we tend our seas. It is how we tend our loved ones. It can be overt. That was the word. It can be overt and expressed into the world, but it is also the small things. You choose what is your authentic expression. And in this time, in this energy of 2024, when this is being recorded, it is a tremendous opportunity to declare what it is within you that wants to be birthed, that will align you to your optimal evolution. Who are you? Answer that question. What do you want and why do you want it? Let us fill in the hows. Let us deliver that which your heart wants to receive. We prescribe, set intentions. Identify that which feels completely aligned within your human existence. Create a vision in your mind that wraps around this desire. Imbue it with feelings. How does it feel when you achieve this? These are the intentions that take wing and with which we, your guides, your teams, can work with. We can then feel, see, hear, know what is authentic in you and provide the opportunities for you to evolve down that specific path. We all, your guides, your souls. Have written into your soul's evolution in this incarnation. First and foremost, the opportunity to be the most authentic, beautiful version of self. Because as you move to that place, you become what the world needs. There is no accident that you are here at this time. You are here for a reason. It can be subtle and quiet or a, a, that word and loud. You choose and let the inner choose, allow the inner scape to determine the direction your life shall go. And we want to ask, are there questions while we are here, Chris, that you would like to ask either for self or for the audience in general. Yeah, I thank you for all of that. That was really beautiful. I love that you said you came here for a reason and it can be quiet or it can be louder and you choose. Now, is that something you choose beforehand, before incarnating as part of your soul contract? Or is that something that people can change along the way? It is often written into the soul's blueprint. 
you will come in with a predisposition, for example, as you discussed in the past, for animals. You have a compassion and a love for animals, so your actions will reflect that. Now, that is the subtle way of influencing in the world for you become a pet owner. The louder version would be to to organize a whole pet rescue organization. So there's iterations and variations between how it unfolds. As far as what your soul is here to vibrate, that is a stream of vibration that makes up who you are. You may have one where you need to write a book and share information you have learned on your evolution to inform others so they too can learn from your wisdom. You have learned from a multitude of people who have shared their wisdom. So it is not a single thing. It is the whole soul embodied in the human expressing through the human. Does that resonate? It does. That's really beautiful. And I think specifically that example of creating an animal rescue versus just influencing one animal's life, because I, I understand that, you know, we influence everyone we meet, right? So I'm you trying do. to think of a question just for myself. I don't know. Is there is there anything that I should know about my future that or my purpose that you think would be helpful for me to know at this time? Mm. You have chosen so bravely to move into a beautiful path. This is the goddess. I am a different guide than you just hear it from. <clears throat> I am a manifestation of the divine feminine in the earth. I am here to awaken those aspects in all humans. And I want to share with you, Chris, the resonance of divine feminine, the Mary Magdalene, that you are embodying, that you are speaking, that you are sharing. You know your words have influence. You know that words have resonance. And we acknowledge that you have chosen words that empower. And we encourage you to continue to move forward with this evolution of sharing your brilliance with the world and know we have much in store for you. In August, September of Earth time, new opportunities will present and they will be the beginning of something new, playful, and fun for you. It is a delicate balance with humans. If we say too much, they will change the trajectory. <laughs> if we give away too much information, the optimal unfolding of the next step could shift. But this small nugget, we want you to have to encourage you to continue to move forward in the way that you have designed for your life. And we thank you. Well, thank you so much. I really appreciate that. Welcome back, Teresa. So what does it feel like when you're doing a channeling? Um, <clears throat> you know, it's become such a natural um, form of communication for me. And... It's this combination of joy and gratitude that I get to do it. I call it joy to I know that's dorky, but whatever. I still I like, like it. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, and it brings tears to my eyes. 
and it and it fills my heart so full that I get to do this, that I get to show people how normal it is and how easily accessed it can be. And it's not weird and strange, maybe a little weird, but I own that. That's good. Weird is good. Weird changes things. <laughs> totally. Yes. So, and, and channeling is, you know, talk to the artist, talk to the writer. That's channeling. Channeling is when you allow yourself to merge with your soul and bring in wisdom from other sources. Is it like being in that flow state? Like I know that from writing. Yeah. Yep. Yep. It's in the flow state. Yes. So how does you as Teresa, are you just kind of taking a step back and listening to the channel talk when it happens? Like, are you conscious? How does it, how does it like actually feel? Yeah. Yeah. So there's all different ways to channel. Um, There's the trans channels who go into a trance and they literally take a step out and allow the being to come in and move through them. Um, I have a vertical, so your energy 101, we all have a vertical tube of energy that runs through our body. And I utilize that tube to bring in information through my crown chakra and it filters into how does that work? It filters in through the brain and the the throat chakra to pull out words to form sentences and convey ideas. That's why sometimes I don't, I couldn't find overt. I couldn't find overt anywhere in my brain. Um, and sometimes I'll hear information like, no, don't say that, or use this word, or directives like that and occasionally i'll have they'll show me pictures to give me more roundness to whatever i'm conveying um so it's it's full sensory and yeah it's really cool it's a lot of fun well, it was really, I haven't had anyone actually channel on the show before. So I appreciate that. It was, it was really special to watch. Yeah. I, I'm, I geek out over the Bashar clips on <laughs> YouTube or on TikTok. So yep. it's, it's fun to have my own little private uh, showing here. Yeah, that's great. So is there anything else that we didn't cover today that you really want to get across to listeners? You know, I think the most essential message I want all beings on this planet, all human beings to receive is you're amazing. You're loved more deeply than you could ever imagine. You're worthy and you're here for a reason. Give yourself permission to receive all of those words into yourself and hold them tight because they're true. I have goosebumps again. You keep doing that to me. <laughs> you know, I think that's really beautiful. And I really hope everyone allow, like rewind this and listen to that again, because I, it, I think a lot of people have trouble feeling that and even hearing that sometimes that mm-hmm. there is this greater plan and that your soul chose to be here at this time in earth's history. And there's this whole team behind you rooting you on like that's that's just take a moment and imagine that that's pretty powerful and you know so many people are out here not feeling worthy and you know if anything feels makes you feel worthy it's going to be that so uh that's really beautiful so i'm sure listeners want to get in touch with you they want to learn from you they want to follow your work so let us know where can we find you in in the interwebs no, thank you. So I'm on TikTok, Facebook, um, Instagram. I'm also on LinkedIn because of my corporate background under Teresa Warren staff. And you can find out information on my website. I have meditations. I have a mini series. Um, I teach about harnessing your intuition. I teach about um, manifestation. They're all available on my website. I also have a group 
every Tuesday morning at 9 a.m. Pacific that's open to anybody who wants to attend. And in it, we come together and support each other's evolution. It's called the Trust Circle. Um, and I think the final thing that I'd like to share is I have a six-month program called The Alchemy of an Intentional Life. I have had several people who have done it over and over and over again because it's completely changed their lives. Um, registration opens in February and August. So if you're feeling called, reach out to me. This is by interview. It is not a, <clears throat> it has to be the right fit for everybody who attends. It's a very small curated group. Um, and if it doesn't fit, I'm here. I have limited coaching opportunities, but but I, I'm always open to have a conversation. I'm here to serve. I'm here to help you evolve. So. Yeah. Thank you so much for sharing. You know, everyone go jump in the trust circle, go follow Teresa. Do you channel on TikTok? I channel on YouTube on my, okay. sorry, I also have a podcast called soul channel on YouTube. And there's, um, it's a three part podcast one is interviews the second is called mystic messages where i go into channel and i have a moderator ask me questions while i'm in channel about all sorts of topics um we did one on the um solar eclipse that just came out um last week um a couple of days before the eclipse and i also teach through the podcast and those are create clarity moments so it's so a lot of variety on the podcast. It was the universe told me I had to start a podcast. And I said, yeah, 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 whatever. Later, I'll do that. <laughs> and now it's grown into this incredible place of wisdom. We just share wisdom there. So, Well, everyone go listen to the podcast. So much wisdom, so much knowledge. Thank you so much, Teresa, for sharing everything. Thanks for being my first guest for season two. And everyone listening, uh, please like, share, subscribe. If this resonated, send it to someone you think could hear it, could use it. Help us spread the good word. I will see you all next week. Have a beautiful rest of your day.